I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but, you know, life and stuff. Anyway, I did a previous video on the equation, 60 divided by 5 parentheses 7 minus 5, end parentheses, and, well, it's become my most disliked video. Well, I'm a pretty small channel, so it didn't take much to accomplish that. But I will say that the detractors convinced me of one thing. Mathematics is not being taught well at all. So let me start from the beginning. The whole controversy stems from an argument about the order of operations. But what is an operation? The dictionary defines it as a mathematical process, as addition, multiplication, or differentiation, and also as the action of applying a mathematical process to a quantity or quantities. To get a slightly more precise definition, an operation is the mathematical process that is done between two operands. And what is an operand? You can define it the opposite way. An operand is what a mathematical operation is performed upon. Now I know that's a bit confusing, so let me just give an example to explain this better. This is a simple 2 plus 2 equals 4. Let's start by asking what the operands are. And again, it's pretty simple. They are the 2, the 2, and 4. And so what are the operations? That's the plus sign, which tells us to do addition, and the equal sign, which tells us the equality. And yes, that's right. Equals is a mathematical operation. So too are less than and greater than signs. So now we know about operations. Let us discuss the process of mathematics now. Nearly every equation we seek to solve is requiring us to deal with a binary operation. Binary operations occur when there are two operands for the operation. So let us examine one of these now. 1 plus 2. Here we see the 1 and the 2 are operands, and there is just a single operation, addition. That single operation is between the two operands, so this is a binary operation. What about this, though? 1, 2, plus? Well, this is meaningless. The operation needs to occur between the two operands. If it's not in that order, you can't solve it. And so what about this example? 1, plus times 2. Now there are two operations between two operands. Again, this is meaningless. We need binary operations. An operand followed by the symbol of the operation we're going to do and then ending with the second operand. Of course, we can do more complex equations. For example, 2 plus 5 minus 1. Here we have three operands, the 2, the 5, and the 1, and we have two operations the addition, and the subtraction. So how do we resolve that? Well, this is where the order of operations comes into effect. Since addition and subtraction are at the same level, we solve the operations from left to right. In so doing, we are only looking at each binary operation. Again, 2 plus 5 minus 1. The first binary operation is 2 plus 5. So we do that operation and get 7. Now we have remaining another binary operation, 7 minus 1. We do that operation and we get the answer of 6. There are no more operations, so we're done. Now there are many symbols that work as an operation in mathematics. But you know what isn't an operation symbol? Parentheses. That's right, parentheses are used primarily for grouping things. They tell us what to do first. But even though that's the primary function, that is not their only use in mathematics. For example, in a function, you may see something like this. f of x equals x squared plus 1. The parentheses here indicate that this is a function, not a grouping. More important and more relevant to our discussion is when we see something in this format. a parentheses b plus c end parentheses. Let's examine this in more depth. What are the operands? Well, that's easy. That's the A, the B, and the C. What are the operations, though? Well, there is only one. That's the addition. There is no operation between the A and the term in the parentheses. Let me stress that again. There is no operation between the A and the term in the parentheses. If you think there is an operation there, consider this. 
if there's an operation, then adding another operation will mean that you have two operations without operands between them. For example, adding an operation here, two plus two, let's add another operation, two plus times two. Well, we now have an invalid structure. You can't have two operations in a row, but you can add an operation between A and parentheses B plus C. For example, A times parentheses B plus C. And that's clearly something that can be solved using multiple binary operations. Therefore, there is no operation between those because adding the operation does not make a redundant operation. So if there is no operation between the A and the B plus C, what is actually going on here? Well, similar to the fact that F of X is not indicative of a grouping, but instead identifies for us that we are dealing with a function, this format is showing us that we are dealing with the distributive law. What it says is that A has been factored out of B plus C. Therefore, to undo that, we have to distribute A through B plus C. And the law of distribution shows us the rule of how that happens. A parentheses B plus C equals AB plus AC. Notice that functionally what we did is multiply A through each term inside the parentheses. This is why so many people make the error of thinking that parentheses are implied multiplication, because you use multiplication to distribute. But distribution is not multiplication. It is distribution, and therefore it's far more important than mere multiplication. The law of distribution is a law, and therefore takes precedence over anything we have to say about the order of operations. Now I realize this can be difficult to grasp, so let me explain using yet another term we don't find in PEMDAS, factorials. Look at five factorial. We can write it like this, five factorial equals five times four times three times two. You can even add in times one at the end if you want, since that changes nothing, but it's redundant, so I'll leave it off here. Okay, so suppose you have the following equation, 120 divided by five factorial. What would be the result? Pretty much everyone would realize 5 factorial, calculate that first, you see it's 120. So the answer is 120 divided by 120 equals 1. But suppose that we had for so long argued that a factorial is implied multiplication. So 5 factorial is an implied multiplication of 5, 4, 3, and 2. Therefore, the equation really is 120 divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Now, we have to use PEMDAS and go left to right. 120 divided by 5 equals 24. 24 times 4 times 3 times 2 equals 576. 576 is not 1. Clearly, the second answer is flat wrong. Just because 5 factorial can be replaced by a sequence of multiplied numbers does not mean you can pry off the first of the series and use it as if it's not part of the whole series making up the factorial. In the same way, look at the original equation that caused so much trouble here. 60 divided by 5 parentheses 7 minus 5, end parentheses. The 5 is distributed through the 7 minus 5. You cannot simply pry it off and attach it to the first operation, the division. It is fundamental to the entire term within the parentheses. You have to distribute the 5 back through the parentheses first. Then you can solve the rest. 60 divided by 5, parentheses 7 minus 5, distribute the 5, it's 60 divided by 35 minus 25, all still in that parentheses, because that's how you factor it out, that becomes 60 divided by 10, which is 6. The answer here is unequivocal, 6. It cannot be anything except 6.